growing up, you know, you saw the after school specials and Alex, forgive me, when I was growing up and we just had regular TV, you know, 247, 50, 62, you know, only the five channels. Uh, you know, they had the after school specials about peer pressure and things like that. Uh, and telling you, you should, how to deal with peer pressure. And it's talking to, you know, kids in the elementary, uh, middle school, high school level, just preparing them in life to deal with peer pressure. And even though it should be something that you learn at a very rudimentary age of don't fall to peer pressure, that is something that I believe that we as Americans as a whole, we fall victim to and put us in the bad financial situation that we're in. With all that being said, Alex, we're going to start the video and all that other good stuff. Uh, but so what's your ideal and concept on peer pressure? And then I'll tell you how peer pressure affected my life early on. Um, I think, yeah, I think peer pressure comes from people that uh, feel like the people around them influence them to do something like they, they feel embarrassed to not do it because other people are doing it and they just follow the crowd. That's right. And and is they want to be a part of they want to be a part of a group. And and you know my favorite words question information received. You never question if the group that you want to be a part of is beneficiary to you, especially at a young age, you're not thinking long term, beneficiary to you for the long game. And I mean, no matter if it's, you know, after school clubs, no matter if it's games, no matter if it's football teams, sports at athletic teams, or anything like that, um, it's it's something that people and everybody know what the word peer pressure is because you know everybody walk around hard. Oh, I'm so hard. I don't, I don't fall to peer pressure with nobody. But the truth is, most people are in bad financial straits or broke because they fall to peer pressure. And I mean, no matter what financial channels you look and look at, they say the biggest mistakes and habits of people that are broke is they want to keep up with the Joneses. Keep up with the Joneses is peer pressure. That's exactly what it is. Um, when you buy stuff to impress people that you don't even think about or like, like you living in the projects, but you buy your kids Jordans to make it look like you got more money than everybody in the project. That's an oxymoron. But you want your kids to be the social focal point of it. It's the peer pressure of it. And then, of course, once you buy them, then somebody else will be like, oh, she, I'm using air quotes because I, I don't know the lingo these days, but, oh, she's stunting on my kids. I got to go buy some Jordans, too. And that was the thing when I was growing up. All the kids, and we were in a, a lower middle class, poor area. All the kids, I mean, besides me, I was wearing pro wings, uh, painless shoes, but all the kids was wearing name brand shoes. And it looked like one kid would come to school with a pair of name brand shoes, then the next day or two days later, another kid would come in with another pair of name brand shoes better than that. Like, it was all a competition to see who could be more popular, who can, who can be looked at above their peers. But in the long game, as I fast forward, those same people that were the most popular people in school, they are the brokers people as adults because they still trying to be that kid from high school. So that's, that is, you know, what I've seen growing up, but I mean, you, I know you have more than five channels. So what, so how was that process handled for you on the growing up from middle school to where you at now? Um, yeah, I mean, shoot. Growing up, like, I, I guess I, like, I could, like, I, there was, obviously, there's a lot of kids uh, that kind of just, like, go with any crowd. Like, they have no sense of, like, they can't make a judgment for themselves. Mm -hmm. If I saw something stupid being done, I knew it was stupid, and I I'm, I'm, I was quick to be, like, I'm not doing that or whatever. Um, So, I mean, it's not that I didn't deal with peer pressure or whatever, but it was just, like, there's there's a lot of scenarios where like you might hear of kids getting in trouble and stuff that are just like idiotic and I never mixed myself in with that um I think 
if anything, I allow pressure to myself from uh, people doing better than me so I can motivate myself and push myself. Um, I think, I think in a sense, people need pressure, but they need it or peer pressure, but they need it from the right group. Um, you know, um, that whole saying that we always say, like, if you hang out with five millionaires, you'll be the six, like, that's still going to be pre peer pressure on you. And if you set yourself goals, I think um, you are accountable to executing that goal and you need to be held accountable and responsible for that. Um, I, I just, I mean, from a young, young age, like high school, I just like, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say like I I wasn't even really thinking of money at the time. I just like I knew consequences if I did something stupid. So I was like, let me not do that, you know. So that that was really it. But I never um uh, until it was like when I was and that's why it's hard too, because like when when I turned 18, I really just thought to myself, everyone I know with money is doing stupid making stupid decisions with money i don't want to be like that and so i just like thinned my circle so it was like it wasn't that i didn't deal with peer pressure it was like i wasn't around enough people to have peer pressure because i just like i didn't want to be around people making mistakes with money i just wanted to follow this one fine path and then meet people on that path to better myself financially and for me I'm not gonna say this is this was the main reason why I ended up two hundred and fifty thousand in debt. It was, but this was a contributing factor. The thing was was I always grew up. Of course, I had bad financial influence, and I wish I could say it was from outside sources. For but for me, it was more inside. I mean, inside like inside my household, inside my family dynamic just had bad financial uh, literacy. And I always thought, I mean, I'll, at a young age, I was always taught, oh, you look the part so people can believe that you are the part. But the truth is, you can look the part, but it costs money to look the part. And if you ain't got, if you don't have it, you're just trying to impress other people that really don't care. So starting off, and again, this is not the main contributing factor, but it, is, it was a factor. I thought, oh, I have to look the part. You know, I got to go buy 50, 60 pairs of shoes. I got to wear different name brand clothes and stuff like that. I always got to dress to the nines and things like that just to impress people. But then after I heard Dave Ramsey say it, he only took me one time to say it. You're buying stuff to impress people that you don't even like. It just dawned on me, like, I buy this stuff to make other people say, oh, that's nice. Oh, this, but I'm not doing it for myself because me, I'd rather be just in T-shirts and shorts. And, you know, for the past nine years, that's all I've been in is T-shirts and shorts. You call me up for a funeral, T-shirts and shorts. Wedding, T-shirts and shorts. Hey, let's go out to eat, T-shirts and shorts. Because that's all I wanted to be in. But it took somebody to say that to me as an adult that you don't have to you don't have to impress other people to live the way you want to live and make money. But again, it was always branded in me, oh, you looked apart. So growing up, you know, we had we had the fancy cars in the driveway, but we was broke as hell. But everybody else thought we had money. I mean, everybody else thought we had money, but we live in the same hood as you, but you think we got money because you see nice cars sitting in the driveway. Our cars are getting broken into because they thought that it was money there because it was nice cars there. They never thought to go inside the house and see the roaches running around, but still, that's what it was. And that's how I was taught growing up. And that is the ass backwards way of doing it. So now I do the complete opposite. I read to look like a hobo on the streets and people think I have nothing and I have all the money in the world. So what message I'm trying to convey to the people is Stop trying to run with the crowd. Stop trying to have the latest and greatest. Be okay in your own skin. You'd rather be the part than look the part. 
don't fall to peer pressure. And every when you hear that word, people always go back to, you know, middle school days and things like that. Of, oh, want to be in a group or a clique. Even as an adult, we fall victim to peer pressure, even if nobody wants to admit it. But be comfortable in your own skin and do what's best for you for the long term. It's okay to, you know, a friend since high school, you know, they toxic, toxic as hell and you cut them off. It's okay. They're going to talk about you anyway, if you're around or not. So you might as well let them talk about you while you are bettering yourself. Don't stay true to the game or real to the game because, oh, this is my day one. I've known him for so long. That person you know for so long could be the same person that's going to keep you in financial situations and y'all calling each other, borrowing $20 to get gas to go to work every week because y'all turning up on the weekends and doing stuff like that. So, Alice, do you have anything else on that before I close it out? All right. With all that being said, please comment in the comment section below. Uh, let me know if you believe peer pressure is still a thing. Uh, if you agree, disagree, that's fine. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. And thanks for joining in. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you guys.